Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Published by Christian Faith Publishing, Sally Breeze Green's book, Lo and Behold, The Christmas Story, shares with children and adults alike a fun and heartfelt creation that will take them beyond the stars that the angels of heaven get ready for Angel Gabriel's news of the sacred birth of the Savior. A beautiful story and adventure ensues as Lo and Behold take up their task of delivering the very important news to the hills of Bethlehem. Sally Breeze Green holds a certificate in spiritual formation from Columbia Theological Seminary in Decatur, Georgia. She served most of her adult life working in the local church setting in various capacities. She has served as a ruling elder for several tours of service at First Presbyterian Church in Midland, Texas in the area of prayer ministry, which is her first love. She retired from eldership in mid-2019. She served as choir chaplain for 12 years. She's devoted much of her time since then to writing. That's her second love. Lo and Behold was adapted as a musical and presented in her home church in 1993. That was before publication and updated for presentation at Christmas in 2020. Lo and Behold, A Christmas Story by Sally Breeze Green shares a delightful tale of angels and heavens and the Savior's birth. And Sally joins us on This Week in America. Hi, Sally. Welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Oh, thank you, Rick. It's a pleasure to be here. What a delightful story, so well told and illustrated. The book available at Amazon, the usual places. We'll go through all of that as we talk on the program. What was the inspiration? I love the story behind writing uh, this book, Lo and Behold, The Christmas Story. Share that with us, the, the way this came about. Well, actually, I've had a, a very interesting life uh, in my dreams, and it seems to me that uh, God speaks to me in my dream life, and this really came about as he woke me up about 3 o'clock one morning, and this was many years ago, and he said, get up and write this down, and I thought, hmm, that's got to be <laughs> from somewhere besides my thought pattern, yes. you know? And so I did, got up and started writing, and it just seemed to just flow right out of my pen. And uh, next morning when I I read it back to myself, I thought, wow, this is really, this is really neat. And I wonder if this could be uh, used, you know, to get the word out, especially to little ones. I feel like today's time is really tough on little kids. They don't have much... Uh, to secure them in their faith, I don't think. Anyway, that's my opinion, of course. No, I think it's accurate, uh, yes. Uh, anyway, I I tried to get it published way back then, but got refused in many, many places, and that's the typical thing of an author. You know, you get more refusals than you do acceptances. And finally, when I saw uh, an ad on TV from Christian Faith Publishing, I thought, well, why not try it? And in my old age, why not give it a shot? So I sent it in, and it was received immediately, and I was thrilled. And so it came into uh, the publishing, uh, well, the process, you know, takes a while, and yes. um, came out in, uh, in 2019 and uh, began its distribution so i've been selling since that time and i've written another book since then and that's been published and now i've got a third one in the process which should come out early next year that's fantastic how suddenly this career is taken off you write this and the trying to get it published and then this is published you've got another one published and one on the way our guest in the program is sally breeze green the book is Lo and Behold, A Christmas Story. You'll find it at Amazon, of course, all the usual places, ChristianFaithPublishing.com, the publisher of the book. I want to talk about writing in the book, but you say something that's interesting, that rejection you have to go through, and that is so typical uh, of a first-time author trying to, to make an impression to get somebody to read and to accept the book. Talk about that. That's a real lesson, isn't it, for others out there who may have uh, desires to be a writer because rejection is part of the process, isn't it? Oh, it certainly is. I kept all those rejection letters over the years <laughs> in a file, and I kept going back and reading them, and it was the same kind of thing. This is not our genre. It's not time for this, and we don't do this. And, you know, 
every time I'd get a letter in the mail, I'd think, oh, maybe this is it, maybe this is it. And, of course, it wasn't. And that's why I was so thrilled. when I got the phone call, actually, from Christian Faith Publishing, and they said, we really liked your narrative and we want to publish it. And I just couldn't, you know, I just couldn't believe it. But it took all those years. Sometimes we have to wait until our dreams get fulfilled. Exactly. And persistence is the word that comes to mind if you're thinking about writing or doing anything in life when you're rejected. That doesn't necessarily mean forever. That's just a a temporary setback. I want to get back to writing this because the way you talk about it, it's almost like you had a divine inspiration to write the book and to help you write the book. Talk about that, because it sounds like uh, you had a co-writer along the way here. I did. I really, it it made me think about, you know, the days when they said Scripture was written by the inspiration of God. I used to laugh about that, thinking, yeah, sure, but guys wrote it. And but this was, I felt just exactly like that because it just started out just you know in the beginning this little story just came out and I just kept writing and writing and I went to bed that night thinking well that was an interesting dream you know but <laughs> they always say when you have a dream you should get up and write it down right now because it sinks into your subconscious right away. And so I was glad I did, because when I read it back the next morning, I didn't have to make too many corrections. Uh, It just came out. Um, I did have to laugh at the the title, um, Lo and Behold, were the names of the angels, and that came from an an instance of speaking with my father-in-law, and he used to laugh, and we would discuss theological things a lot. And uh, he said, well, you know, the, the two most famous angels in Scripture were low and behold. And I said, well, Pop, I don't remember that. I remember Michael and, you know, Gabriel. <laughs> and he said, well, no, this was low and behold, because many times he said, lo, the angel of the Lord said, or behold, <laughs> the angel of the Lord did this or that. So we laughed. So when it came out, I said, well, that's got to be the title of the book, Lo and Behold. Uh, Lo and Behold, A Christmas Story by Sally Breeze Green, our guest on the program. In fact, the, what the book dedicated in the, to the memory of your father-in-law, the honor of your grandchildren, once you started this process and then getting it illustrated, and so many of the reviews talk about the, the beautiful story and the beautiful uh, uh, illustrations that will spark the imagination of young people. Talk about the process of getting the words, the text, properly illustrated to bring the, the, the story across to the, to the reader. Well, that was up to uh, Christian Faith Publishing, of course, because they, they put the words on the paper, but the... Uh, uh, the illustrations, that was another real interesting miracle. I, I was searching madly for somebody to help me with the illustrations, and I didn't like any of the things that were offered. They just didn't fit with my feelings about what the text uh, says. Yes. And uh, my nephew came to visit one day, and again, this was like out of the blue. He was coming for several years and never did get here, and all of a sudden they said, We're coming. And I said, oh, great, we had just moved twice, so I was in pretty much bedlam at home. And uh, I don't know, we got to talking about what have I been doing, and I told him about the story, and he said, well, why didn't you uh, call my, my daughter? You know, she's, a, she's a, uh, an illustrator. And so I, he took the book home. It had some doodles written on it years ago when I first, you know, put it down on paper, and uh, she took it home, and she said, oh, I love it. I've always wanted to be an illustrator of children's books. And so, <laughs> so it kind of just fell into place. It was like another little miracle to me. It's amazing. So then, uh, and the second book, she also illustrated it, and the third one coming up, she's put her, her mark on that. So I'm, I'm thrilled for her, too, because it's getting her work oh, out yes. to the public. And if people see it, they might think they wanted to engage her 
you know, to be an illustrator. What a journey so, this has been, yes, with the, with the uh, struggling to find an illustrator, and you have a family member that participates in it and is doing that. From the getting this started with the dream, the, the inspiration for the title from, from your father-in-law, it's a, it's a remarkable story and a, a beautiful story, the, the actual story of Lo and Behold, A Christmas Story. Book is available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all the usual places, ChristianFaithPublishing.com. And if you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can uh, link on directly and get all the information and order the book. And this really is a story for all generations, isn't it? As I'm reading the uh, all the reviews, all excellent reviews, uh, adults are enjoying this story as much as the, the children. Well, that really thrilled me, too, because sometimes we adults think we're too smart, you know, and yeah, exactly. we forget how, how we have to be childlike in our acceptance of the Lord's Word. So this was a really exciting to me to have adults tell me what a good story. They enjoyed reading it, you know, to their kids, and then they got something out of it, too. So I, I felt that was a real blessing. It's a great story, a surprise at the end. I won't give it away, but keep reading and enjoying the story. Sally Breeze Green is our guest. If you're Googling, you can uh, find information on all of her books. And you mentioned uh, another book that's published. What is that, uh, Georgie, A Big Fish Tale? Uh, talk yes. about, uh, yeah, give me a little background on what that book's about. Well, that, that sort of came out of Dream Life, too. Uh, it's a story of a little boy who lived with his grandfather because his parents had gone to heaven and uh, grandpa had always wanted to catch this big fish and they were fishermen from the beginning of the story from the time he was a little boy they would go out into the hills of Colorado and and try and catch the big elusive bass Um, and finally of course in the end of the story they catch the bass and uh, it was a tribute not only to grandpa who then had passed on, and Grandpa had wanted Grandma, who was also in heaven, to enjoy this. So it, it was just a good. It's a virtue uh, value book. It's not so. It's not a fantasy like Lo and Behold. But I figured this is for the little older child who might be seeking uh, to answer some of his own dreams. It came out of my own history. Actually, my dad used to take me up in the mountains of Colorado, and we would fish. And uh, it, it just hooked up with and the dog in the story was one that my brother found at the Safeway store uh, when we lived in Denver. So it's it's conf- well, I want to call it a it's a combination of things out of my own life history that went into this story that and it made it special to me, and I hope it is to somebody else. That was published by Christian Faith Publishing as well. Their website, christianfaithpublishing.com, the book, Georgie, A Big Fish Tale. And you've got, you mentioned the third book. I love the title on this. Talk about the, the book that you're in the process of, of uh, finishing. Well, it's called Put a Tiger in Your Tank, <laughs> and I have tried very hard to get in touch with Exxon oil company to see if I could use that title. I don't know if it's in the public domain yet or not. I guess I'll find out as the publishing goes on. Uh, yes. A uh, story about putting uh, the Holy Spirit into our into our life instead of just good oil in your car. It's a story of a little girl in her car and it gets broken down. She goes to the, uh, the, the, the gas station and... Uh, the guy that runs the gas station tells her all about Jesus, and she said, I wish there was a place where people could go and get, you know, filled up with good stuff. And he says, well, there's a little church down the street. And so, of course, in the end of the story, he asks her to say the prayer of forgiveness. And uh, and so she went on then down, down the highway of life in her well-oiled car with the tiger coming out of her tank. <laughs> I love Singer. the story and the title. Yeah. Well, it's really cute. And the pictures on it that my niece did are really cute. So I think that's another fun story for the middle 
the middle-aged little kids. We'll be know. watching for that. Our guest on the program is Sally Breeze Green. The book specifically we're talking about, Lo and Behold, The Christmas Story. That's out now, of course, and you'll find it the usual places. Also, Georgie, A Big Fish Tale, and soon, possibly, uh, Put a Tiger in Your Tank, if uh, that passes muster with the uh, with the title and gets out there and published. And uh, I, I would love to have a chance to talk about that as well. You do such a, a remarkable job with these books in, in telling the story in a engaging way what other books are you working on are you doing maybe some some adult based books as well well yeah I, I think I'm probably done with kids books uh, unless God gives, uh, yes. God gives me yes. another dream a, another dream <laughs> uh, I do have uh, during my tenure at First Pres, uh, uh I was a, a lay preacher for about 12 years and I've got a series of what I call seasonal sermons by Sister Sal, all those S's. <laughs> I like that. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, and they, they are seasonal. They follow the, the church uh, year. And uh, I had another book that I have already self-published uh, that contained the cleft notes that I made for the choir during my time there. Uh, tried to encourage them with the music that we provided for the congregation. And uh, that, again, like I said, that that's self-published, so I, I probably won't seek to do anything with that. But I think the, the sermons are, are worth trying for. I, I don't know whether Christian faith now at least has me as a, a, a credible author, so yes. they might look at something a little deeper than kids' stories. What has this been like, this second career, a successful career as a writer? Having the book out there and getting a response from family, friends, and people literally all over the world who were touched by the story of Lo and Behold, A Christmas Story. What's this like? This has to be an exciting time for you. Well, it is. I feel like a Grandma Moses. You know, she didn't start <laughs> painting until she was elderly. And yes. like, I, I think I wrote in my information to you that I, I just turned 86, and my husband just passed away last June, and so it, it, this has been a really uh, a good thing for me to have to kind of work uh, through my yes. grief from losing him. So it it came at the right time. You know, God has his own way of timing. Everything has its season. And I think maybe this has been a good season for me. And I, I don't know whether it'll go anywhere or not, and I really don't care as long as some people get hold of it and learn about the Savior's love. I'm so sorry to hear about your husband. I understand. How many years were you married? Uh, 65, almost. Wow. We almost made it to 65. What an amazing uh, love story. We had a business together for 40 years, and uh, we just retired in September, I think, of 2019. So it was really interesting there, too. You know, you work and work and work, and all of a sudden you quit work and you die. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kinda, that's just wild. Kind of hard. Well, this has given you something like, like you just mentioned, to, to get you through this period of grief and to help other people in the process. The book is great for Christmas. I know people buying it now and stocking up for Christmas to pass out to the young people in the family. But you don't have to wait till Christmas to share the story, do you? I mean, this is a, at any time of the year, this is a great read. And parents are enjoying reading it to kids. Kids are enjoying reading it to the parents. They're reading it together and discussing the, the content this book is really seasonal, isn't it? I mean, you can use this any season of the year. Well, I'm hoping I'm hoping that's true. It is very difficult to get the news out right before Christmas. Uh, I did some publicity right before Christmas this last year, but I think it was a little too close to the date, and people had already done their shopping, and the wholesalers uh, probably needed a little more time than that. That's who gets, That's who does it. It's not re retail is when you buy it over the counter, and wholesale is the buyer who buys a big lot of it. You know, that's interesting. You've got two sets of skills here, at least two sets of skills, maybe more. You've got the creative part where you write these stories, 
uh, maybe a little help along the way, but you write these stories like Lo and Behold, the Christmas story. And then the business part of it. And you talked about that in trying to find a publisher and then doing the marketing. What has that been like? That's a whole different uh, area of expertise, isn't it? Well, it is. And you get immediately after the first book went out, I got a lot, a lot of emails saying this was a great book and we loved it and we want to take it and well, it's just so costly because then you're on your own, you know. Yes. Uh, Chris Faith does a little bit of, of uh, marketing for you, but uh, it's really up to you then to find your own places of distribution to um, put it out before the public. And that has been really difficult, well, the- or at least has been for me. Well, yes, and you hear that from, from uh, authors all the time, the difficulty in doing the promotion out there. I guess with social media and all the podcasting networks, all of that, it's a little easier to get venues. And this book is, is doing quite well. And you can find it, again, at Amazon, all of the usual places. The book is Lo and Behold, A Christmas Story by Sally Breeze Green. Breeze is B-R-E-E-Z-E. Uh, if you Google that, at christianfaithpublishing.com, her books are available there as well. The other book that's out is Georgie, A Big Fish Tale, and uh, soon another book out there, and uh, hopefully we'll have a chance to talk about that as well. Sally, it's been fun having you on the program. Congratulations on all the success and uh, of all the enjoyment you're bringing uh, adults and young people worldwide with the, with the book, Lo and Behold, The Christmas Story. Thank you for being with us on the program. Well, thank you for the opportunity, Rick. Have a good day. It has been our pleasure. And the book, once again, Lo and Behold, The Christmas Story, Sally Breeze Green, the author and our guest. Information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.